39. Calculate the delta G notch for each of the following reactions from the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. Okay, so we have H2 gas plus I2 gas yields 2 HI gas. They give us a temperature of 400 degrees Celsius, oh my gosh, and a Kp value of 50.0. Now, when they give you a equilibrium value, a K value, capital K, and you're solving for your Gibbs free energy, your delta G, there's only one formula that we go to, right? And if you're solving for delta G, it's easiest to remember the formula as this. Delta G equals negative RT ln of K. Now, I didn't put Kp in here because it could literally be any K, right? Any equilibrium constant. There's so many of them. There's Ka, there's Kb, there's Kc, there's Kp, there's Ksp. It does not matter. It just has to be an equilibrium constant. So we're calculating that delta G notch, which means that we should know these three variables. Now, the R value is a constant number, right? So the R value here is 8.314. And this is joules per mole times Kelvin. That's the unit for the R value. So an R value is always just the standard value, 8.314. Um, and if we're using 8.314, which I like to use, just know that it's going to be in joules. Temperature is T, right? Now, look at the R value for the units. There's a Kelvin in here. They gave us a, a Celsius. So I have to convert the Celsius into Kelvin. That's easy, right? Plus 273. Now, you can do plus 273. I'll be more specific. I'll say plus 273.15. That's the actual specific amount. So we're just going to add this up. 400 plus 273 is 673. 0.15. But, you know, just use 673. Let's see if our answers are very, very, very similar. And that's the temperature that I'm going to use for T. They already gave me the equilibrium constant. That's the K value, 50.0. And LN is a function on the calculator. So we're going to get to that in a little bit. We have everything that we need. So let's just plug it in. Delta G would be the negative is in the formula times by 8.314 and then times by your temp which is 673.15 and then times by your ln your natural log of 50.0 now the good thing about this if you're using a lovely ti which is what i love to use calci is its name um you could plug this all into one shot. That's exactly what I'm going to do. So delta G is, now I'm going to say negative, because that's in the formula, 8.314 times 673.15 times LN is the button over here. And now I'm just going to put in 50, right? You could put 50.0. Sure, why not? Close those parentheses and press enter. Okay, so I get a negative... 2,180, 21,893. If we round up the 9, right, it goes to a 4. However, just know that if you're using the 8.314, you had joules per mole. Those units did not cancel. This is a big number. That's why we usually see delta Gs in kilojoules. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly convert joules per mole into kilojoules per mole. And remember, joules to kilojoules, all you got to do is just divide by 1,000. So I'll take this value, divide it by 1,000. And now I'm going to put my correct sig figs on there, right? Between the, the temperature that we used and the Kp, this had the lowest number. It had three sig figs. So technically, my answer should only have three sig figs. So I'm going to say negative. It's spontaneous. 21.9, and that's 21.9 kilojoules per mole. Final answer, and that's it. Pretty simple, right, guys? I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you with future questions. 
They also have different uh, subjects on the channel. Go check it out. And we're almost at 25,000 subscribers, which is absolutely incredible. And it's all because of you guys. We would literally be nowhere on this channel without your support, your help, your kind comments, and just, you know, being awesome all, you know, overall. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate you all. Let's keep working hard. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.